Welcome to the second video of this module dedicated to the arbitration of investment disputes. In this video, you will learn the main principles of investment arbitration. How does investment arbitration work? How do parties consent to arbitration? Which claims can investors bring against the host state? These are the main questions we will address today. An investment treaty arbitration, that is, the arbitration of investment disputes based on an investment treaty, the consent of the parties to the dispute is disconnected one from the other. The arbitration clause is contained in a treaty, signed between two or more states, and the class of foreign investors are not parties to that treaty. By signing an investment treaty with an investor state arbitration clause, a state in effect gives a general consent to the arbitration of disputes with foreign investors of the other state. This is generally interpreted as an offer to arbitrate. The investors in turn give their consent at a later stage, when they submit their claim through a request for arbitration. They then, so to speak, accept the offer contained in the treaty. We therefore have the consent of the two parties to the dispute. Arbitration is currently the main method used for the settlement of investor state disputes arising out of bilateral and multilateral treaties states are parties to. Arbitration clauses contained in such treaties have evolved from very simple clauses to relatively complex ones. States are free to condition their consent to arbitration. One often finds such conditions in recent treaties. States can, for example, include, alone or in combination, a prior notification of the intention to bring a claim, a cooling off period between the notification of a claim and effective submission of a request for arbitration to allow the parties to the dispute to settle the dispute through negotiations, a choice between several forums or arbitration rules, or even the domestic courts of the host state. The most frequent fora are the International Center for the Settlement of Investment Disputes, ICSID, arbitration under the auspices of the Permanent Court of Arbitration, PCA, ad hoc arbitration under the uncitral arbitration rules, and finally, but less frequently, the traditional venues for commercial arbitration, the Arbitration Institute of the Stockholm Chamber of Commerce, the International Chamber of Commerce in Paris, or the London Court of International Arbitration. A final condition one finds in certain treaties is the obligation to first submit the dispute to the domestic courts of the host state to allow these to settle the dispute. Such an exhaustion of local remedies is often limited in time. An arbitration clause in a treaty, however, does not automatically allow all individuals or companies from one of the state parties to the dispute to submit a claim against the other state. Investment treaties typically contain often complex and vast definitions of who can be considered an investor of a state party and which types of investment the treaty applies to. This means that only those investors who meet the definition of investor in the treaty and who have made an investment as defined in the treaty can have access to arbitration under that treaty. Who can be considered an investor of a state party is typically defined differently for natural persons and for companies' legal persons. I invite you to have a look at such a definition in Article 1 of the Bilateral Investment Treaty between the Netherlands and Argentina. For natural persons, investors are usually defined by reference to the nationality of the individual. For legal persons, the definitions vary much more. One finds definitions which considered as investor of one of the state parties, companies which are registered in that state, have been established in that state, have their official seat or the seat of management in that state, or are controlled directly or indirectly by nationals or legal persons of that state. What an investment is, is usually defined very broadly in investment treaties. And it is relatively similar in most treaties. I invite you again to have a look at such a definition in Article 1 of the Bilateral Investment Treaty between the Netherlands and Argentina you will see that the definition contains many forms of investment. There is, however, general agreement that usually a purely commercial transaction, such as a purchase and sale agreement, is not an investment. However, some treaties do include such transactions in their definition.
In the next video of this module, we'll have a closer look at the difference between contract claims and treaty claims.